I'm a small business. I have a SEP, and I've heard you talk about uh, ETFs and mutual funds, where they're supposed to go. So am I correct in thinking that my ETF goes in my SEP? It can. Um, it doesn't really matter if it's a ETF or a mutual fund or an individual stock. It has to do with the anticipated growth rates. So because a SEP, the purpose uh, of a SEP is to be a retirement plan for self-employed people. So you're putting away money. You're getting a tax break today, which means that you don't have to pay taxes on the money that you put in today, but you're going to pay taxes at some point down the road. So you want the slowest piece, pieces, slowest growing, excuse me, pieces of your portfolio in your uh, pre, uh, pre-tax accounts, because what you have to remember is that whether it's a fund, a mutual fund, or a stock, whatever you grow inside your set, you're going to have to pay taxes at some point in the future. So I believe taxes are going to be higher in the future than what they are today, unless for you know, unless for some reason you know you're you're making half a million or a million dollars today, that puts you in a really high tax bracket, and when you retire, you're going to shift to you know, being able to control that income a little bit better and you're going to be in a lower tax bracket, then, you know, that might work, you know, to your advantage to get the tax break today. But um, ETFs are very tax efficient uh, types of investments because you you can control the, the, the capital gains Uh, tax burdens a little bit easier. So those are really best if you had to choose to put in your non-qualified account and then, you know, do your fixed income. You know, if you're, if you're in an asset allocation model that uses a fixed income fund or CDs or, um, you know, even Timothy's market neutral fund, those slower growing pieces of the portfolio are good for uh, the qualified types of accounts. 